Hello, everyone. How are you on today? I pray that many of you all are feeling much better and that you are getting through these hardships and times that you may be facing right now. You know, with what's going on in your home and in your marriage or in your life and many other things, I have come on here to bring comfort to your heart and just read to you the word of God that I know will make you strong and help you come out and bring peace to you. But before I get into that, I want to thank all of you, my new subscribers that have joined me as well on today. Thank you guys so much for your prayers, your comments, oh, and your testimonies. They are so encouraging, so powerful. It's just only letting us know that God is hearing and answering prayers and never give up. Never give up. You are almost there. I'm telling you guys, God is hearing. And I also want to thank you so much for your support in the work of God. May the Lord bless you mightily and richly and in abundance. You know, God loves, hallelujah, when his people comes together. He loves it. And you know, I have something so wonderful. I know that's going to bring comfort to many of your hearts. Someone woke up this morning, I know, crying and feeling so heavy. Such heaviness on your heart. Oh, but I want you to know that God sees you. He sees the tears. He sees the heartache. You know, there are three incidents from the word of God that I want to talk to you guys about. Where people was crying out, but God delivered them. And so I want you all to see that God hears the prayers of the righteous. He sees your tears and your cries. Now, we have once in the past, you know, talked about the persistent widow, of course. But there are some things that the Lord had me to just really, you know, just focus on and look at that I know would bless you. And so I want to go there. And then I want to also look at several others. Um, situations and incidents where God delivered his people out that were crying, that were oppressed, that was going through the most difficult times of their life. I mean, but God showed up. And so I know that this word is going to be a blessing because I'm sure many of you all are asking, where is God? Why isn't God coming through for me? Will he ever come through? Am I the only one? You know, you have so many questions and so many things that is on your mind that you're battling with every day. And so this word, I know is going to really help you guys really trust the Lord and see that he is listening. You know, I want to start with the persistent widow in Luke chapter 18, verse one. It tells us one day. Jesus told his disciples a story to show them that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow, a widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request. And you know, that's what men of you all I know are at today. You are just wearing God out. You just cannot stop crying out. You cannot stop praying. You just cannot give up. Your heart is hurting. That's why you are under such a heaviness. There is such oppression. You are in pain. You are feeling the hurt, the sorrow. You are seeing that loved one. You are seeing that spouse hurting you. You are seeing how they have turned their backs on you. You are hearing about this ungodly relationship they are in. There are men have been divorced. Many of you have been divorced. You're facing the trials and the troubles. And you're on your way to court, men of you. But I know, I know that the Lord has brought to you this word on today to really show you that he is seeing what is happening. You know, that is what was going on with this lady. She could not give the judge no rest. She said, give me justice. Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. This enemy, this thing that is in my life is troubling me, so I need your help. I need you to get me out of this. I cannot go on with this. I can't deal with this every day, this constantly 
oppression, this thing that is troubling me, beating me down. I can't rest. I have no peace. I am hurting too bad. I need you to help me. You see, that is why this lady had to come every day, every day and night, every day she had to call out for help because she was in trouble. And so the Lord is saying, be like this woman when you're going through. This is not the time to give up and stop praying. Keep pressing in is what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying to the disciples. And he's saying it to you, precious people of God. He is saying, don't give up while you're hurting. Keep calling out. But look at what he goes on and says. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. He even rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the son of man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? You see, it's the troubles, you guys, that we face every day causes us to cry out deep prayers. Deep prayers from the heart. It is the troubles that will cause you not to give up. It is the troubles that will cause you to seek God with all your heart. The Lord says, this is how you pray. He says, God will hear and answer those prayers. He don't want you to give up. Keep calling out to God, telling God what you see, telling God what you need, telling God about that spouse who is in sin, who's, who's down in this place in this pit on their way to hell and, and, and God knows wherever else. The Lord is saying these things that you are seeing and witnessing, they are presented, they are in your life so that you will continue calling out to God. Well, why? Because God wants to bring healing. God will bring healing to that life, that home and that marriage. God will solve that dispute, that problem you're facing. That is what God is calling you to do. Keep calling out. You know that enemy that's rising up against you, precious people of God. He just don't know what he's doing. He is about to come down these troubles that you are going through by him. It's only going to cause God to come through and crush him and destroy him and deliver you. That is what happened with this persistent widow who kept praying. The judge say, I'm going to give this lady what she asked because she won't give me rest. She is wearing me out with her constant request. The Lord say, you be just like her. Never give up. Keep trusting him. You know, there is another story. David continued calling out to God. The Bible tells us in Psalms 34, verse 1, listen at what he says. He says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak to his, speak his praises. I would boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. And then he goes on and share what happened. Why he's praising the Lord. Why he wants to boast only in the Lord. And let all know who are helpless know to take heart. He says, this is what happened. Listen to what he says in verse four. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. See, David was in trouble at this particular time. And this is what he says. He says, those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame would darken their faces. In my desperation, he said, I prayed and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. And the Lord is going to do the same for you, precious people of God. Those of you all that are facing this desperate situation you know just like the persistent widow she was in a desperate situation she was in a desperate place but that's what caused her to cry out and david also was facing trouble as well when i studied i saw at the time he was running he he was running he he was he was in trouble he was running even from saul as well he he was faced with so much at the time but the bible tells us that this is what he did. He was calling out to God in those times of trouble. And look at what he says. He says in verse 7. For the angel of the Lord is a guard 
He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. So, so David is praising and he's sharing his testimony on how God delivered him when he was in trouble, when he was on the run. And then he goes on and he says in verse nine, fear the Lord, you his godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes grow hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Come, my children, and listen to me, he says, and I will teach you to fear the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right. His ears are open to their cries for help. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. He will raise, he will erase their memory from the earth. The Lord hears the people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirit are crushed. I know that's where you are people of God, those of you that have been going through the difficulties in your troubles, in the marriage, in your home, you're seeing that spouse hurting you over and over again. Your spirit is feeling crushed right now. Your heart is broken. But David says, the Lord will rescue you from all these troubles. Hallelujah. The righteous, he says, the righteous person faces many troubles. But the Lord comes to the rescue each time, David says. Hallelujah. For the Lord, he says, protects the bones of the righteous. Not one of them is broken. Calamity will surely overtake the wicked. And those who hate the righteous will be punished. But the Lord will redeem those who serve him, he says. And no one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. David is saying right now, he spoke these words and these words are still speaking to each and every one of you. He says, trust in the Lord. He will deliver you. Yes, troubles comes on those who are righteous, but he says the Lord will rescue you every time. Keep calling out. You see, it's the troubles. It is the troubles that causes us to pray without ceasing. Tears, yes, they may be streaming down your face. Yes, you're feeling so broken right now. But the Lord would not despise a broken spirit. The Lord would not ignore your prayers, people of God. He sees you right where you are. The Lord is going to bring down the wickedness that has come in your life, in your home. Yes, many of you all are being persecuted and being attacked by the enemy because you are God's people. This is why trials comes upon the righteous many times. But remember, the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Yes, the enemy has rose up in your house. Yes, the enemy may have come in through that spouse to oppress you. But as you cry out to him day and night, even the Lord told the disciples, be like the persistent widow who done this to a wicked judge she went to, who eventually even gave her justice, who didn't care about people. He says, but think about God who loves you, who loves his people. He have called and chosen. He says, wouldn't he answer their cries? And that is what the Lord wants me to share with men of you all today through his word. He will certainly hear your cries. He, he certainly sees your tears. He certainly sees the heartbreak, but he's going to give you what he promised. You know, the people of Israel were going through the same things when they were in Egypt on the Pharaoh's cruelty and oppression. But, but the Lord heard them. I want us to take a look at it in Exodus chapter three. I want us to look clearly at what happened, starting in the first verse. The Bible tells us one day Moses, he was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. 
Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, in verse 4 it says, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here am I, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned him. Take off your sandals for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, look at what he says. I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their sufferings. And that is what the Lord is saying unto you, precious people of God. He sees your distress. He sees this harshness that you are under by the enemy. He sees this oppression. He sees what you are going through. He says he sees and he has heard your cries. He is aware of these sufferings. Has rose up and came in. Maybe through the spirit of adultery. Through the spirit of lust and perversion. Through the spirit of abuse. Through the spirit of harsh treatment. Through the spirit of unfaithfulness. This demon of rebellion. Has come in to oppress you. Man or woman of God. That is standing. Seeking God. Asking where is my Lord. The Lord sees what you are going through. Precious people of God. He sees how the enemy has come in. To steal, kill and to destroy. And to stop the plans and the purpose. That God has planned for your life. And has given you. The enemy has come in. But the Lord is saying the same things. To you. That he told Moses to tell the people. He says I am coming against Pharaoh. I am going to lead my people out. Remember the Lord says, I have seen what they've been going through. You see, it was the troubles that had them calling out to God day and night. And I'm sure they were saying, where is our help? Who would help us? Where is God? Who can give, give get us out of this? It is the troubles. I'm telling you, God sees that is causing you to cry day and night and you're wondering when will God deliver me and you may be feeling like you are the only one going through you feel like you're all alone but God is saying he sees you he's going to give you just what he promised there is a promise he knows you've been standing on he knows that you've been making your request known unto him day and night this same God that delivered David, this same God that delivered the persistent widow who was hurting, who was going through and being oppressed as well by the enemy. The Lord God, the same one that delivered the people of Israel out of Egypt is surely going to deliver you. He is surely going to deliver you, people of God. I'm telling you, weeping only endures for a night. Oh, yes, it is a time when you cry. It is a, a time and a season of weeping. Yes, it is a time where there may be famine and distress. Yes, it, it is a time where there may be heartbreak and heartache. It, it may be a time where you, you're feeling like you, you, you're fighting for your soul. You're fighting for to keep your head and, and keep yourself strong in the Lord. You're fighting for the continue going on day and night. You're fighting for, for, for just the peace of God. Oh, but the Lord says he's seen. Hallelujah. He's about to bring so many of you out. Every one of you are coming out if you don't give up. Keep calling out. Hallelujah. The Lord sees what you're going through. He sees the heartbreak. He sees the tears. Oh, hallelujah. You know, the Lord is with those. Hallelujah. Whose heart is broken. That spirit of oppression, that demon that has come in and has caused you to fall out in such a place or to get so low in such a place where you're wondering, Lord, I need you. Will you be able to deliver me? Oh, yes, he will. 
He is going to bring you out. Don't give up. Keep calling out. Keep standing. Keep holding on. Hallelujah. Weeping only endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The Lord says when you keep calling out, this is someone that is walking and trusting in God. They are holding on. They're not giving up. Remember, he asked, when I come, how many would I find on the earth who have this faith? Who didn't give up, who trusted in the Lord? Who trusted in the Lord? Who didn't give up? And remember, the word of God tells us when David wrote in Psalms 34, he said, the Lord God, he will come through for the children and for those who do what's right. Those who search for peace and work to maintain it. Those who want God's promises and plans to come to pass in their life and is facing troubles right now. He says, the Lord is going to rescue you. He sees those troubles. He is close to the brokenhearted. Just think about that. God is close to you when your heart is broken. Hallelujah. This is what draws him onto you. He just cannot sit by and watch somebody cry out to him day and night. God just cannot sit back and look up on this thing you're going through and not have no compassion. The word of God tells us that the Lord is always moved with compassion. He's always moved when he sees your tears. And so when the enemy came in <laughs> like a flood, the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit is going to come in and lift up a standard against him. You may be crying right now, but I'm telling you there is a time David even says you're going to reap joy. Hallelujah. You're going to see the Lord God bring you out. He says it was in my desperation. I prayed. And the Lord listened. He saved me, he says, from all my troubles. The Lord is going to save you. And he even said that there was an angel that came that guarded him and surrounded him and defended him when he was afraid. When you are going through, hallelujah, God is going to rescue you. He is going to change every situation and turn it around for good. Yes, the enemy came in and meant it for, for evil. But the Lord, hallelujah, is going to rescue you. Remember, he's going to do it for his glory. Yes, we who are going through are God's people and face many troubles. But the Lord, remember, he will rescue you each and every time. That is a guarantee, precious people of God. You can stake your very life on it. As surely as the Lord is sitting on his throne, you will see the wicked come down. The Bible tells us that God redeems those who serve him and no one who takes refuge in him, no one who trusts in him will be condemned or made ashamed. No one will be left desolate. No one will be left without hope for the Lord ears is open to your cries, people of God. He will hear you and deliver you and bring you out, hallelujah. There is deliverance coming. I know, I know that many of you all are saying, Lord, please help me. Remember, he has not forgotten the promises. He spoke about it to the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. He says, I see what the enemy has tried to do, but I'm driving him out. My people are coming out. He says, I am driving out the wicked that is even in their land. You see, the devil tried to come in and steal your marriage he tried to come in and break up the union that god had between you and your spouse making you all one yes he may have sent in this other person to come in and to divide and separate what god has joined together but the lord is saying i'm driving it out i'm removing it what i joined together let no one separate let no one come in and seduce the husband or the wife and tempt them to do evil and break up what I've joined together. I hate divorce. I hate adultery. I'm coming against this evil. Yes, the enemy has come in to try to steal, precious people of God. 
He has come in to try to take what God has given you. But the Lord says, let no one separate what I've joined together. As the scriptures say, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined unto his wife. And the two shall be one flesh. It is to illustrate Christ and the church being one. Trust him. Hold on to it. Trust the Lord. The Lord sees what you are going through. He's going to come through and deliver you. Remember, weeping only endures for the night. But joy comes in the morning. God sees what this adversary has done. You remember, even with Hannah's case, she was being oppressed by Penina. This woman would vex her year after year, the Bible says. She was fronting in her face over and over. Over and over how she was having children for Hannah's husband. And Hannah couldn't have any. Remember the story in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1. Hannah was going through because she couldn't bring forth children for her husband. And this woman on the side, who her husband was married to as well. Because you know in those days, men was able to marry and have multiple wives. But this woman, Penina, she was his wife because Hannah, who he loved, couldn't have any children. And so they would, of course, have concubines to come in so that they could build their families. But this woman was using it against Hannah year after year, boasting. And she was making fun of Hannah because of her situation. But this is what caused Hannah to pray day and night. And guess what happened? God heard her prayers. Hannah not only had a son, but she had multiple children. Hallelujah. She had many. God began to move in and rescue Hannah from the oppression that she was going through. And that is what is happening today. Yes, that spouse may be saying all types of things. Or you may be in, attacked by the enemy in every way. He knows how. But these things is only to make you cry out day and night. And make God move in quicker. Hallelujah. So never give up. Keep praying, precious people of God. God is moving the mountain. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for everyone, Lord, that you are confident on today. Thank you, Lord God. You have allowed them to see that you are hearing their prayers and that you're going to come through and deliver them. Father, yes, come in a mighty way. Do great and mighty things, Father God, in ways we have not seen. Open up, Lord God, doors. Bring out these spouses, oh God, who are bound, who the enemy is using, Lord God. To hurt your loved ones. To hurt, Lord God, those that have been waiting and standing for so long. Rescue them, Lord God. Move on their behalf. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are breaking the wicked into pieces. This wicked spirit that has come in to steal, kill, and to destroy. Thank you, Lord God. We trust in you today that you are bringing forth deliverance. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you that you are opening up doors. Thank you, Lord God. You are even shutting doors. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for a new thing that you are doing. You are coming through to rescue your people, for you have heard and seen their tears. Thank you, Lord God, weeping only endures for a night, but you're bringing forth the, the joy. Thank you that you're overturning divorce cases. Thank you, Lord God, you are bringing restoration and healing. Oh God, we receive it on today, each and every one that is listening. We give you the praise, Lord God. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord God, for nothing is too hard for you. And all the people of God says, amen, amen, and amen. Be blessed today, people of God. God sees where you are. Your deliverance, the Lord says, surely he's coming through with it. So get yourselves ready. Get, get yourselves prepared, people of God. God is moving on your behalf. And we thank him for it. And remember, he loves you and I love you too. And until next time, bye-bye.